on the eve of 2023 and the 2023 baseball season coming up in just a couple of months, we're going to take a trip down memory lane 35 years to Topps 1988. Welcome to Bruce in Colorado's Pack Breaks. Today we're going to do something kind of interesting, kind of different than just the usual uh, current card new release pack breaks. Instead, we're going to take a look back 35 years to the release of Topps 1988. Got a couple of these uh, at a card show. They are the Cello Hanger Packs that I remember very well uh, back then. Um, mostly I would buy them because they're cheap and um, they were still cheap to this day because uh, they only cost a dollar uh, each um, because 1988 does not have a whole lot of rookies. It does have a lot of Hall of Famers um, and we're going to kind of look for those and see what we get in these packages. It also does not have a lot of inserts like we're used to now. In fact, back, back in the day, um, inserts, at least from my perspective, were kind of annoying because that was one fewer card you got to complete the set. Um, and you would have to buy 100 of these packs just to get the 22 all-star commemorative cards. Back then, I was mostly collecting football cards and tops of course had football cards that were very, very similar to this. And then they would have, I believe, like the Thousand Yard Club. And that was the insert from, in this case, 1987. Am I that who, who was in the All-Star game or who had a 1,000 yards in football. Um, but today we're going to look for some Hall of Famers and um, some error cards. 1988 does not have uh, a ton uh, after 1987's banner year of of um, the wood grained cards and tons of rookies that went on to become hugely famous. And then uh, 1988 came around and there's really only one rookie, uh, rookie card that's um, of a recognizable name and that's Tom Glavin. And we're also looking for Hall of Famers like Mr. Padre Tony Gwynn Greg Maddox of the Cubs, who eventually went on to be with the Braves, Wade Boggs, Alan Trammell, Kirby Puckett, Dave Winfield, all names that we've come to know and love, Tim Raines, Ozzie Smith, Fred McGriff, who was just inducted, the only new member of the Hall of Fame in 2022, Fred McGriff from the Blue Jays, Paul Molitor, Eddie Murray, Andre Dawson, Gary Carter, Don Sutton, Mike Schmidt, Cal Ripken, Bob Gibson, uh, Stan Musial had a card in there, George Brett, uh, Ryan Sandberg, Barry Bonds, Bo Jackson, George Brett, and the unusual cards like the 87 Record Breakers McGuire uh, with a white triangle misprint on the bottom, an Al Leiter card, which doesn't have Al Leiter on it. We now resume our regularly scheduled programming. Uh, I picked this one out of the pack because, of course, Tommy Lasorda was um, uh, the Dodger manager for a million years and uh, was a household name, basically. And um, so that was a recognizable name right there. And, of course, uh, Tommy Lasorda is in the Hall of Fame as a manager. Card number 74. Danny Heap, not in the Hall of Fame and not uh, not an error card and not something we're looking for, but that's cool. Bob Patterson, 522. Rick Roden, Yankees. Rafael Ramirez, 87 record breakers. Of course, Nolan Ryan. This is a... I guess a, a desirable card. Um, so Nolan Ryan, of course, Hall of Fame. Now let's uh, put these up on a stand. If we get something like Nolan Ryan or a Hall of Famer, or by any chance a 
and one of the error cards, like Don Mattingly's cards. Error or rare cards. Mario Soto, 88 checklist. I actually kind of like these. I think a lot of people didn't. I actually used the checklist and checked them off because, as I said, the goal was to get all the cards. Mike Pagliarulo, Arby McDowell, John Wathen, manager of the Royals. Look at this. 1987 record breakers. Strangely enough, this is a desirable card because uh, there is a variant of this where it has caption on there about the record breaking that he did. Belting two uh, switch home runs in two straight games. So he was uh, at that time, I think, the only player who had uh, hit a home run in the same game uh, from both sides of the plate. So this is actually kind of nice. I should say, however, that the reason these are available, the only reason these would be uh, worth anything is in a PSA 10, which means they'd have to be in perfect condition, which of course these are not, having been uh, tossed around in a, in a box that was pretty beat up. Should have taken a picture of it. And uh, so, and they're in cello packages, so of course the corners can be bent. I even see some, some damage here. But of course the centering's off. So the only way these are ever any uh, worth anything are PSA 10s. This would never make PSA 10, but it is a good conversation piece. Another 87 Record Breakers card, like the Nolan Ryan. This is Eddie Murray. Um, the other reason this isn't particularly valuable is because the uh, 1987 Baltimore Orioles kind of stunk, and if it wasn't for Eddie Murray and uh, Cal Ripken Jr., uh, would have been uh, pretty uh, dark days for the team from Baltimore. Here's a Ron Bloomberg turn back the clock 15 years to 1973's card. Tigers Doyle Alexander. Mike Felder. 718. So this actually has uh, something from all series of... Uh, tops that year so it isn't just like series one it's all 718 cards or 720 cards were released at the same time so you have a chance of 720 different cards tough to land the cal ripkins and, and uh, nolan ryan's mike jackson for the phillies mike gallego for the athletics craig lefferts for the giants paul o'neill Reds, John Smiley, oops, for the Pirates, still no Hall of Famers, Ron Kittle for the Yankees, All-Star National League, Ozzy Smith, so, Ozzy Smith is definitely a Hall of Famer, that's nice to have, Mike Eastler, Jody Reed, Sam. Even though these guys aren't super famous 35 years later, um, each one of these cards probably meant something to someone out there. Of course, the actual players like Steve Ontiveros. And, but some kid got them when they were 8 years old or 9 years old and can remember each card like they were superstars. Jay Aldrich. Ed Romero. Socks. Mike Bilecki. <laughs> Mike, really? Mike Bilecki. Yo, if you feel me, then like and subscribe. Larry Herndon for the Tigers. Dave Winfield All-Star. All-Star game, Dave Winfield. Lance. Vance Law for the Expos. Rick Leach. Mike Hinneman. It's fun to see. Look at these guys. They all have mustaches. Dwight Evans. Not in the Hall of Fame. Juan Samuel. Kevin Seitzer for the Royals. Uh, he's got the Gold Cup. Jose Guzman. 563. Jesse Barfield for the Blue Jays. Gary Reedus for the White Sox. Uh, Bobby Meacham. Yankees again. Fernando Valenzuela. 
for the Dodgers. And of course, uh, that is someone that I heard a lot about. Not in the Hall of Fame, though. Played for the Dodgers forever. Fernando Valenzuela. Mitch Webster. Claudel Washington. And Wayne Tullison for the Yankees. And Dick Schofield for the Angels. Okay, that's that pack. Do any of these uh, call to mind something you opened up 35 years ago? Or maybe you did with your father? Oh, there it goes again with its hilarious noises. Guess also these all-star cards and these record breaker cards are a way to... <laughs> I never thought of it until now, but a way to break up the packs when you've got 700 guys that are, at least now, three, 35 years later, no-names, but uh, you've got all these guys that are no-namers. you got to throw some cards in that uh, actually mean something. So that's why they have these all-star and record breakers. Joe Bever. Hope I pronounced that right. Brewers Leaders. I kind of liked these, too. So Brewers, Leaders, see if we recognize these names, of course, Paul Molitor, Robin Yount, uh, Rob Deere, and then for pitching, uh, Dan Plezak, and Teddy Higuera, Kevin Elster, Future Stars, was Kevin Elster really a Future star, it didn't work that way, unfortunately, Turn Back the Clock, Jim Rice from 1978 Tops. Like the little script there. Um, it was kind of understated, just like these 1988. Steve Trout. Any relation to Mike Trout? Orioles leaders, of course. Cal Ripken and Eddie Murray. The aforementioned hits of the Orioles. Pedro Guerrero. Jeff Ballard. Jerry Royster. Now, see, that's a name I totally remember because I thought it was a cool name, but I couldn't tell you anything about it 35 years later. Stan Musial from 1963. Also a nice understated uh, card. I like the, the insert, which had the actual batting pose or pitching pose in that case, which is kind of a reverse of what uh, apparently 2023's cards will be well they have a batting pose in the main portion of the card and in an inset of their face their smiling faces <clears throat> tommy john now that's very uh famous because of course the surgery was named after him uh, the elbow and uh, pitching arm surgery that works very very well and of course he they was named after him because he had to have it done came back and made some uh, contributions to the field but tommy john interesting card angels leaders not a whole lot of recognizable names wally joiner um that's mostly what i remember now mike witt is a pitcher pasquale perez <clears throat> alejandro pena for the dodgers wes gardner rod booker Jerry Hairston, Carney Lansford, I remember that name, um, played for a while for the Angels, Red Sox, and A's, Gus Polidor, Tom Pagnazzi, Darren Dalton, yep. making a mess as usual, Ed Correa, any relation to Carlos Correa now, Daryl Boston, for the White Sox. Ozzy Virgil. Keith Comstock for the Padres. John Moses, the Mariners. Mike Birkbeck. Carmelo Martinez. Juan Samuel, National League. Leaders in hits. He was, uh, I guess, number seven, six in hits that year. Behind Tony Gwynn. Pedro Guerrero, we just saw that card. Ozzy Smith, Vince Coleman, Andre Dawson, and Juan Samuel. Willie McGee, Tim Raines are also following, trailing after him. Brett Saberhagen, one of my favorite names of all baseball players. Uh, just think that was the coolest card. So 
I perked up when I heard that name, Brett Saberhagen. I must say also, too, that I grew up in Denver. So in 1987, we didn't have Major League Baseball. We had the Denver Bears and the Denver Zephyrs, who at uh, various times took the championships of the minor league. But we didn't get a whole lot of star power here because we didn't have a Major League team. So uh, you basically kind of picked teams that had some kind of significance for you. Uh, it's also why probably baseball cards didn't sell as well in the Denver area or Colorado or Rocky Mountain area because there are no baseball teams. So this is a cool card. It is way off center. Um, so I would never get it graded, but that is kind of a factor of on most of these cards. They're cut very sloppily back then, grading and, and all that. Condition was uh, an issue. Uh, people watched for that. Kids didn't, but uh, collectors did. Uh, but it was mint, near mint. There wasn't the uh, digital version of grading. That was Kelly Gruber, Denny Walling, up oh, another Brett, Brett Saberhagen. Must be mint to be. Great pitcher, but not in the Hall of Fame. Manny Trio. Jack Morris for the Tigers. Tom Hare for the Cardinals. Pete Incavelia. Of course, I remember that name, too. Jimmy Key for the Jays. Jim Presley. Rick Shue for the Phillies. Willie Randolph for the Yankees. Coming down to the end. Jim Clancy. No relation to Tom Clancy, the writer. Phil Bradley for the Mariners. Penultimate card, Kent Takulve. Daryl Evans. Okay, so we actually did get a kind of uh, a desirable card from the list. Did not get, amazingly, did not get in all of these cards any Hall of Famers except for the Nolan Ryan, the Eddie Murray, and the Ozzie Smith here. Okay, so that was just a, a, a way to, to look for things uh, of interest in this. This pack would have been amazing for any 8, 9, 10, even 25-year-old to have a record of all the players, or at least uh, about 100 of them, from the 1988 Tops cello hanger packs. What do you think? Were you around in 1988? Did you collect these cards? Did you really even care that they were not Hall of Famers? And did you have any, like I do with Brett Saberhagen and a couple of the others that I mentioned where I recognized the names and kind of followed them because I didn't know what else to, to do. I didn't have my own team. So who'd you follow? Was it Daryl Evans or Kent Tekulave or some of these other guys that have recognizable names but did not end up in the Hall of Fame, at least yet? Let me know what your thoughts are. I think this is fun. I would do it again in a heartbeat. It's great to kind of go back in time and see this stuff. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment, please.